Hello everybody and welcome to the BU podcast. My name is Jess and I am here virtually with Liv. Yeah. And so this podcast today is called Being a Trainee Teacher and uh, we have a wonderful, wonderful guest and wonderful guest if you'd like to introduce yourself please. Hey guys, it's Nicole, um, also known as Toft to my friends. And um, what did you do at University Toft? So I did my undergrad in um, P in the secondary years and then continued on and did um, my secondary PGC all at Chai. Awesome. So uh, for people listening, she is called Nicole Toft, but it (laughs) seems very, very silly to call her Nicole. So we all call her Toft. So um, we will be calling her Toft throughout the entire podcast. Is everybody okay with that? Yes. Good. Wonderful. We will carry on. (laughs) Brilliant. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> just a clap for you. Uh, so Toph why did you want to become a teacher tell us your entire life story from start to finish please thank you so once upon a time I was born um no I'm joking um it's a mix of different things to be honest I think influences from my own teachers when I was at school definitely paid a, like a part not just the P department wanting to make me a P teacher but for example, being a musician, yes, you love this one. Um, the music department had a bit of a an influence on me, and then like history and stuff like that. So I think all them and just the way they got to like the know to know me and our like the relationships that were built, were, were, I quite enjoyed it sort of thing. I could always yeah. rely on them. And then as I kind of started going through school, I started doing more like mentoring with the younger years and um, like, as an older student and stuff like that, which was quite nice. And then the feeling you kind of got from mentoring those year seven, for example, to transition in was quite nice. I yeah. kind of did that, oh, I quite like this, um, and then enjoyed sports. I spoke to the PE department about teaching and then kind of went from there, looking at PE courses, um, and here I am. Yay. And here you are, a grown adult. adult. <laughs> oh, yeah. Just about a full-grown adult. Yeah. Um, I was just gonna say that if you were my teacher, you'd be great. I, you would just seem like a lot of fun, even though I met you like half an hour ago. Uh, so, oh, thanks, Liv. <laughs> she is a lot of fun, Liv. I can absolutely promise she's a lot of fun. I mean, um, for the listeners, you won't know this story, but the Shackett story is just—it's just winning. It's great. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's a thing. So um, what's it actually like do- doing a PGCE? I know lots of friends of mine um, who are on my course want to do it. So this will be really interesting for them. Um, so in terms of placement, do you have to find your own or do you get lots of support from the uni? Um, so in terms of placement, the university place us um, and they have loads of contacts in the local area with different schools and they kind of from experience of those types of schools and there's different like there's some are private schools some are full state schools some are um mixed gender some are kind of just single gender and they they kind of match it to the person so they get to know us especially those that have kind of done the undergrad but even those that haven't in the first few weeks and then they kind of match you with that placement so I actually found the placements I was on although they were different from each other actually for me they were the right type of school for me so they were both like um mixed gender schools um in different areas and it was yeah really interesting but perfect for me yeah that's great I think one thing that people who go to Chichester say is that the lecturers really get to know you as a person and get to know not just you as a student but just generally who you are and what you'd like and what your interests are and that's clearly demonstrated through um like being placed in placements that fit you um so uh in terms of your timetabling I guess it's really important for you to be on placement quite a bit as well so how does it work in terms of university actually in hours in lectures versus on placement um so it varies so at the start of the kind of term um you spend a bit of time at university with different lectures Um, And then they kind of stagger you in. So you might start off Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. um, You're in placement A. And then Thursday, Friday, you're back in uni. And that kind of continues for a couple of weeks. And then all of a sudden you're let loose and you're um, in (laughs) placement kind of full time. Yeah, it's very scary the first time. Um, Were you nervous? Absolutely bricking myself. Yeah. I feel like it's different. Like When you start university, you're meeting people your own age. 
Yeah. But when you start placing when you're going into these teachers have been teaching and these kids, they're their teachers. So you're kind yeah. of coming in um, as a different person. Always kids get really excited. Like, oh, who's that in a classroom anyway? Um, so then all of a sudden you start teaching them. And yeah, at first they're a bit like, Ooh, and you're a bit unsure as well. But once you get going, it's absolutely brilliant. So, yeah, I can imagine it's a really nerve wracking experience, but a really important one as well. Um, so other than that, what kind of challenges have you faced in terms of being um, or training to be a teacher? First of all, I'm going to state and be completely honest and say. It's hard. It is a tough year, um, but actually one of my favourite years at university like out of all four absolutely loved my PTC year because not only was I doing what after three years I now wanted to do, I wanted to be in a school. Um, just the, the reward of when you finally complete, even if you complete an assignment or half a term or just have one lesson that kind of goes exactly, well, not exactly because they never go exactly how you plan them, but <laughs> how you planned it and your like the kids are engaged and you're just smiling the whole lesson. I think that just makes it all worth, like all the yeah. paperwork and all the planning worth it. Yeah. Um, so in definitely yeah, PT year it's a challenging but rewarding. And alongside your kind of planning lessons, you're writing assignments, um, and you're doing research about different teaching styles. But the lecturers are always there to help you, and so are the teachers in school. Mm, so you're kind good. of you're not on your own at all, um, which is nice and kind of reassurance, but yeah. So the yeah, teachers in the, there. the teachers in the schools, are you able to like ask them for help and advice as well as our lecturers yeah yeah so you get designated a mentor um okay. and they're kind of the person that does your observations and gives you feedback on the lesson whilst you're in school and then a couple of times while you're there the lecturers will come in and do an observation with you um but you're always in contact with the lecturers by email and they're kind of always checking up on us and then your mentor in school is kind of your point of contact so if you've got an issue you go to them um, if there's, I don't know, you've got a, a javelin lesson and you have to look up the technique. They'll, so my mentors especially took me outside and demonstrated to me. We broke it down and kind of showed me how to do it and how to teach it. Because though I can throw a javelin, it's different when you have to t actually teach it and break it yeah. back down. That's the hard bit, isn't it? That's amazing that you've got so much support because it's obviously a very scary and like new experience. So to know that you have the support both from the uni and from your placement clearly shows that uni have chosen a really great placement and you feel supported, which is so important. Um, so yeah, we found quite... Oh, sorry, Liv, go on. I was just going to talk a little bit about um, what the workload is like, um, because that's something that um, creates a lot of anxiety for a lot of people in terms of they would potentially maybe not um, be a bit hesitant to start a PGCE if uh, the workload is going to be really heavy. So, like, how do you manage that? Do you have any tips or advice? Um, hundred percent. Speak to the people that are already on your cohort. So it's quite nice how quickly um, you get together with the different people that are on PGCE, whether they are the same subject as you or not. Because um, there's always two or three of you from different subjects going to the same placement. So automatically you're Amazing. talking to each other um, you kind of meet with each other on the first day and you've got a, a familiar face. And then going forward, planning wise, we did have a lot of planning to do um, because you're new at it. You have to do lesson plans just so you know, A, what you're doing, but B, the teacher knows you're going to do the right thing. Yeah. Um, but we found um, that we had like a shared area where if someone had done I don't know, a football passing lesson, you could log on there and you could see theirs so oh. we were always sharing resources and stuff just to make that life just a little bit easier um but you do have to kind of plan your time it doesn't you don't lose your social life if you kind of plan it well and there was days I'd come home from school and I'd still be planning or I'd still be writing my assignment but yeah. I think it's just like any time at uni you have to actually think about and plan your life and not wait till the last minute or the night before because a lot of time lesson plans needed to be in 48 or 24 hours early so that actual oh. class teacher could check it um to make sure it was kind of okay so actually that kind of kept you ahead of them but as long as you kind of 
wrote down your little notes for your evaluations and kind of kept all on top of it, you were fine. Yeah, it sounds like it's a tough, like very intense experience, but a really like rewarding one as well, um, which is really, really awesome. Um, So you've spoken like a lot about the support that you've got from your placement, but what about the uni? Do you check in with them a lot? Yeah, so they um, kind of first of all come in just for a chat um, to see how you're getting on. They chat to you, chat to your mentor to kind of say, A, is that relationship working? And B, how are you getting on? Um, How do I feel in that placement? And then they'll come back another time um, to do an actual observation with your mentor. And even if that lesson does not go to plan, your mentor can say, actually, this isn't the normal, um, this is how it would normally go. We every week you have to send them it's called like a mentor log so you have a meeting of your mentor and you send the uni those reports um so every week they're kind of back in contact you saying well okay here's your targets um how are you going to do that or if you need support with those targets they'll kind of help us because especially the lecturers they've all been in schools themselves so they all understand it and they all kind of get and how to help you and stuff like that so yeah, yeah they're constantly there at the end of an email just to help you um which is really amazing do you want to ask some questions jess because i've just spoken so much (laughs) it's fine it's fine it's been nice listening to be fair so obviously we're in the middle of a pandemic um which i'm sure we're all really enjoying what's it been like for you tof teaching because have you been teaching the entire time what have you how have you worked it please tell us well it's definitely different especially being a PE teacher um, yeah. I can't say I've been outside in my shorts much um, what? in the last what? year. I know it's disgusting. Jess, I was fuming. <laughs> Honestly, standing out in the cold and the kid saying to you, "How are you in shorts?" It's it's the highlight of it. It's what, part of your what personality. Yeah, it is. Um, yeah. It's definitely made kind of us rethink how we teach yeah. um, and different approaches. So the first lockdown was very much we were setting work, communicating with the kids. Um, getting the work back in and this time we're doing more live lessons cool. um so sometimes you do get the where you ask the question and you you wait there's no one's no one's talking um but then I've also found that my some of mine I can't stop them so the mute button on google meet has become a, a godsend <laughs> um but it's it's been hard I have to admit it's been hard especially teaching a practical subject yeah. um it's allowing like the kids to understand that actually no we cannot go and play basketball today um we need to learn about the cardiovascular system because you're at home and I'm in school um yeah. so yeah but I think loads of different schools taking different approaches yeah. um which has been quite interesting when I speak to kind of my friends who are also teachers and what their schools are doing um but yeah it's been hard but it's and when we come out of this it'll be so much better and I think I'm looking forward to today. I have a classroom full of 30 kids again um, and I can talk to them. You'll yeah. be back reunited with your shorts eventually. Yeah. Yay. Yay. Team shorts. So has your <laughs> school in particular done anything like differently to anybody else's or is it like, how's the kind of um, overall school? Some schools, uh, some schools are kind of doing full recorded lessons so from year seven all the way up to year 11 they're following their normal timetable the fact they're just sat on the computer um whereas my school the younger years are getting kind of recorded lessons and it means they've got time to complete it and send it to us and we can then kind of mark it whereas the older ones so year 10 11 who have got exams um they're the ones that are having live lessons with their actual teacher um, yeah. and then they kind of send the work back into us so sometimes at half past eight um, when you've got a live lesson you have to tell one of their friends to ring the other one to get them out of bed um, but most of our kids have actually done all right in my school they're getting there that's good they're getting up speaking of yeah. the kids in your school um, I know this story but I don't know if Liv knows it and people listening might not know it can you please tell us the story of how your year 10s found out your first name mm. <laughs> 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 I should not have taken a drink of water just then. Uh, Sorry. <laughs> um, <laughs> yes. Uh, so kids always want to know your first name. They always want to know stuff about you. And sometimes it's really funny when they come out of a story about you and you have to wonder where they got it from. But this, this one, um, luckily the facts in the story are correct that they found out. So 
um, we had to, the girls had to come in early um, just due to the weather outside. I couldn't keep them outside playing netball. It was too cold. Um, so we were just playing like hangman and stuff in the changing room. And then it was my first kind of couple of weeks. They are trying to get to know me, trying to push my buttons. Um, and they're like, so what's your first name? And I was like, oh, I'm, I'm not going to tell you my first name. Like, you don't need to know that. Just call me Miss Toft. It's fine. Um, and then they could see on my badge that it started with an N. So they were saying all these different names, um, Natalie, Nicola, but li- any name they could think of begin with N. And then one of them just went, I bet it's something chavy like Nicole. <laughs> and I, I, personally, I thought my name was quite a quite a nice name. <laughs> something to do with a French or something, but yeah, going to my kids, Nicole Chavi. <laughs> Yeah. stories like that that make me miss school <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, oh i think that... <laughs> yeah. yeah it's the the, uh, the other the other uh, teachers do not let me live that one down no i bet neither do we toft no neither do you no no <laughs> i think it's the little little things that make it so fun like i yeah. never have a dull day at school no it's never. always different isn't it yeah you never know what it's gonna be oh my god uh Liv seeing as you are queen social media do you want to ask the questions that we've had from social oh yes it's very Mm -hmm. exciting um so uh why did you choose the PGCE over the school's direct route way okay so I think it was more to do with my relationship that I'd already built at Chichester Mm -hmm. so having kind of that relationship with the lecturers um, just made me think, actually, I still want them around in my life. Um, whereas although Schools Direct, you are linked to a uni still, I think just a bit like me being a teacher the kids, the lecturers were still my teachers. Um, and I guess it was quite a bit of a comfort blanket. And also having my friends around me from undergrad um, who were also applying, it just kind of made it feel, I could have more support from my friends sort of thing as well. I'd have them there. We'd go to uni together which is quite nice, whereas Schools Direct, sometimes you're in the same school the whole time um, and you only get six weeks in another school, um, whereas on PGC you have two placements and you also have, um, we did two weeks in a primary school. Um, So it kind of gives you that difference and you're longer in those two different placements compared to being in the same school. So I think, yeah, it was more A, the support of my friends and lecturers, but B, having the two different and longer placements was quite nice yeah yeah I I as I'm coming to the end of my time at uni oh um <laughs> it makes me like sad to think that I'm going to be leaving so I can I can see that part of it as well that when you've built a community at university you don't want to leave that when you've got such a solid foundation of support yeah which is quite um, nice yeah so how close are the placements from the university um, it varies. So there's different around. So for Chichester, I think the furthest was like Southampton, um, okay. which is still a bit of a, a trek if you're in Chichester, but there's diff- you can still stay at home and do them. Um, mm-hmm. So lecturers, as well as looking at you as an individual, they'll look at where you are and mm-hmm. how you can travel. So I was lucky that I have my car um, so I could go to different places. But some people, if they need to get a train, they'd have a placement maybe a bit closer to them. And then those that, if they wanted to stay at home in Southampton, for example, um, they might get given a school in Southampton. So um, they are close and the lecturers kind of take into consideration how you're going to get there um, and how far. Some of them, you don't want to have to travel too far in like the mornings and the evenings. Sometimes you just want to get home from school. Um, So they kind of take all that into consideration. I think them being teachers themselves kind of before they're lecturing, some of them still doing part time, make that they understand that yeah um, for sure so yeah they're not too far amazing nice. um so when do you have to apply for a pgc to join in september i know a couple of friends are like planning ahead for to do a pgce so um like when sort of is deadline time as such um that's so oh, we ago, put you on the now. spot yeah um, <laughs> I remember applying in uh, second year or third year. 
I just remember my interviews being about November time. Um, yeah. I'm really sorry. I can't actually remember when I applied. I just remember everyone <laughs> sitting in the library together, writing their personal statements, Doing um, all helping time. each other out. Yeah. Um, and then kind of then when the interview place came back around, helping each other um, prepare. Yeah. Um, well, if the I know you were put on the spot there. So if anyone has any questions about PGCEs, give us a direct message on Instagram or Twitter and we'll get back to you. Toft, just to finish up, uh, what is your main advice for somebody looking to train as a teacher? If you could summarise it. Yeah, uh, do some placements, see if it's definitely for you, um, even if that's kind of two, three weeks here and there in some different schools. Um, a, it helps with your experience if you are applying because you can put it on your application. But B, you can just see if it's for you. Um, decide if you want to go secondary or primary because they are completely different. Um, and then kind of look at what subjects you want to do. And if you are yeah. applying, speak to lecturers, even if you're applying to a different uni. Um, speak to other teachers that you know, whether that's your old teachers or kind of friends that are teachers. Um, get their advice on it. and yeah just decide do you want to put in the work for what will be the most rewarding thing ever um yeah. or do you find that actually it's hard but you don't you know but yeah definitely if you want to put in the work and you want a rewarding career it's definitely one to go into as I said earlier it's never it's never an easy ride it's never a hard ride it's just in that middle everything changes every day um but yeah definitely speak to other teachers and give it a go yourself before you apply that's oh, a really, really sound advice. That's really, really sound advice. Brings a tear to the eye. <laughs> oh, stop it, Jess. <laughs> oh, <such> a, such <laughs> <blur>. <laughs> so, uh, Liv, you've kind of already touched on the social side of things already, but do you just want to say it again, seeing as this queen of social media? Off she goes. <laughs> So if you want to join the conversation, you can hashtag us at Chai Uni or um, if you want to speak to us uh, more personally, you can DM us on Instagram um, at University of Chichester or tweet us at Chai Uni. And if you have a longer question, feel free to email us at studyhere at chai.ac.uk. So thank you so much, everybody, for listening. Thank you, um, uh, something chavvy like Nicole Toff for coming <laughs> in. <laughs> and it's all your wisdom. And thank you, Liv. Thank you so much. Bye, everyone. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye.